if I was going to be serious about this, I should really be thinking of the software wallet coupled with a hardware wallet because that's important. And right. then that went with, you know, like, do you have any suggestions for hardware wallets for folks out there or for myself? I mean, I know that like that everybody each his own and you can Google all that stuff and you see all these, you know, wallets that look like USB sticks. Some are nicer, like a like a phone brick. So you just wonder, like, you know, they all have their features, but I think the basis is like, I should have something right. hardware as well as software. Right. So yeah, this is a great question. This is a great question to end with, right? Because, yeah. uh, you know, do you need a hardware wallet? Okay. So everything, everything is learning. It's all a question of where you are in the learning curve. I've now been in here for about two and a half years, right? Mm -hmm. Just at the start of the pandemic. So whatever that was about two and a half years ago. And, you know, I, my first purchase of a crypto coin was through crypto.com. Okay. Now my education is that I've realized and I've learned through just being in the industry and learning all this stuff, not your keys, not your crypto. So when I have, and I still do have coins in crypto.com, they are located in Hong Kong. Anything could happen where I get a text message and says, we're shutting down. Right. Anything could happen. Hong Kong government could shut it down. Chinese government could shut it down. US government could shut it down. Anyone can shut it down, right? And then my crypto is gone. Right. This is a learning process, right? So it's the same thing. Now, of course, I've gotten to the point where I know that I need a hardware wallet. I mm. know that I need a public and a private wallet. Okay, right. so essentially what happens is you realize once you start collecting valuable NFTs, you don't want to lose those NFTs. And if you keep them in a public wallet, there's a very good likelihood that it could get hacked. Now, the private means that you're moving it onto a hardware wallet. So what I do, and this is what I suggest, if you're going to buy a new NFT and you're not 100% sure if the contract is safe or the website is safe or the coders are malicious, yeah. you buy that on your public and you don't keep anything in your public that's a value. And then as soon as you get it and you think it's a value, you transfer it to your private. And that okay. private is your hardware wallet. And I'll show you what my hardware wallet looks like. This is what it looks like. Yeah. This is it. This is Ledger. So this is it. it you're right. It looks like yeah. a USB, but it has. So you have to have a, I think it's a 10 digit code to get yep. in. You have to, and this is the other thing, you know, when you're setting up your wallet, they're going to give you a 12 or 24, I don't even remember what it is, maybe 24, keyword passphrase. Yep. You have to write that down, yep. write it down. You don't put yeah, it- Don't save it as a screenshot like I did. Do uh, not save that. it as a screenshot. Um, Do not yeah. even- we no, have I, to I did this that. when I, so I signed up with MetaMask. Yeah. And I was, I was setting that up and, and did that. So like, yeah. And I, I saw the things where you can get it in etched on a piece of metal to keep in your pocket, you know, like, or, you know, put in your safety deposit box at the bank, you know, yeah. which is kind of, you know, redundant putting your, your NFT stuff in a bank, which is yeah. weird. They're not synchronized. Right. The hardware and the software. So it's not like what I do on there is also on here, but I can actually move it to the hardware to be secure. And it's, it's physically safer there than it is floating around in an app on the public side. Oh yeah. Because you have to give permission every single step. You have to give permission. Yeah. <clears throat> if you want to transfer it in, you have to give permission. You want to transfer it out. You have to give permission. Right. And so like, for instance, if I'm ever going to sell something, from my hardware wallet, I'm not selling it from my hardware wallet. I'm moving it to my yeah. public and then I'm selling it. So it's your like your little secure FDIC in your pocket now. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and because you can keep NFTs and crypto in it, right? So okay. all my crypto is in my hardware wallet. This also, 
can, and I don't want to be gross here, but in a very, very bad world, in a very, you know, controlling world that you may have to leave the country for, because, you know, let's say Biden says, you know, anyone holding crypto, uh, you know, is uh, a felon of the United States or some other bullshit like that, right? This uh, fits very nicely uh, up your bum uh, when you try to get across the uh the the country line uh and listen i am not joking because listen there are guys from the ukraine that had a little bit of bitcoin and that's literally what they're surviving on in poland right now because they knew to take that hardware wallet and get the hell out of the country so yeah, yeah it's uh a, and of course if you're asking me what hardware wallet i prefer i do like ledger as opposed to trezor there's okay. no specific reason you know there was kind of the fitability there was the smallness of this that i liked um treasure is a is a square kind of triangle thing right uh, but other than that you know they're both very very good there are new things coming onto the market um i always like you know why did i go with crypto.com why did i go with open c why did i go with ledger they've been in the business for a while and, and ledger I've, was who i was looking at honestly like that just between a couple of different sites, it seemed like uh, more informative and they had a couple of different choices and a good explanation of what each one did. So it was easy to kind of like make a decision on what you wanted from them. So, yeah. And here's my little pitch to everybody who's watching this. There is an affiliate link right in the bottom of the description. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it, it doesn't necessarily really help me out that much. So Ledger's but a click on cheap. it, click on it anyway. Yeah, Led, Ledger's click on it anyway, but Ledger's a little bit cheap in what they're doing. So you actually get, um, I think it's a $5 coupon code to buy more Ledger and you, kind, you can kind of stack them up on top of each other. So I had like $40, so I went in and I bought like another Ledger. So when you buy through the affiliate code, it like gives me $5 coupon. It's nice. Like, okay. And I do think that, you know, from your end, from the technology side, I think that you should definitely get to that point where, and here's the other thing. So once you have a hardware wallet, you're actually buying crypto on that wallet. So Ledger has what's called Ledger Live, where mm -hmm. you can actually go in and you can buy the crypto. So you're not transferring it from like crypto.com, which means they're taking a fee and they don't right. really want you to move your stuff off of their you know, platform. But Ledger, you can buy everything, pretty much everything, not everything, but pretty much everything through them. And then they're getting better at adding coins all the time. So yeah, I like Ledger. That's okay. where I buy my crypto now.